Hello you guys, this is JJ. Welcome back. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day or night whenever you do come across this video. So do you feel that you just quantum jumped? Do you feel like you just entered a different timeline in your life? If that is the case, let's see what the timeline is. Um, all the timestamps, like I said, will be in the description box below. How to book a personal reading, a Reiki session, all of that is always in the description box below. So we have pile one, pile two, and pile three. So let's see what time line did you just jump into and i will be describing what quantum jumping is that is in my highest tier on patreon for those of you who are interested that is where i talk about all my uh, manifestation techniques how to do candle work uh, tarot uh, i go over every single card all of that is in my highest tier over at patreon Thank you to all of you who are part of the Patreon family. But um, without any further ado, let's get started with the reading. Bye, you guys. Hello, pile number one. Let's see what timeline did you just step into? What are the themes? I will be looking at what shadow work you will be doing as well because we always like to look at the dark as well, right? We cannot have just light, at least not here. The way I do things, I like to always look at the dark side. We can blame my moon in my eighth house <laughs> for that. But um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What is this timeline about? What a version of yourself did you jump into? And let me look for the architect card. As you can see, I don't prepare for these readings at all. <laughs> They're just like whatever comes through. They're thick. So let's see. Let's see. What is your archetype? Ooh, exorcist. This is giving me queen of swords vibe. This is giving me do not mess with me type of vibe. This is me, you know, doing my own thing, um, handling things. Very emperor-like, I would say, as well. This is the energy that I'm picking up. But I do see here that this is the archetype that you're taking in this new timeline that you jumped into. And this is you not, you know, allowing anything or anyone to hold you back. I do see you bien empoderada, empoderado, very empowered for sure. Um, I see that you're also getting rid of a lot of destructive energy here and impulses. It's like a lot of, it's giving me like the phoenix rising out of the ashes type of thing, but you're going through <laughs> through the uh, the uh, burning down of something here okay there's a lot of things in your life that you're definitely getting rid of and letting go of yeah you're facing your own inner demons and you're like okay i see you i know what what my weaknesses what my shadows are and i see you actively working through these shadows in order for you to get to this point of empowerment okay well let's see what else do we have here we have the second house, so you might be Taurus, okay? You might be a Taurus, might have strong Taurus, but I feel like in this timeline, your focus is going to be around your second house, around your resources, around your materials, about your material things, the things that you currently have or that you want to have and own. I feel like also you're becoming accountable for your own emotional um, baggage, if you will. I see you kind of like... There's this energy of also letting go of a lot of things that you've been carrying around emotionally, okay? Whether this be things that were put on you by other people or by yourself, but it's like you're looking at your belongings in all areas. You're becoming very focused with your finances, with a lot of things. We have the Kasimi in the heart. Yeah, there's this heart chakra activation here with the green, the Kasimi as well. Is this of like, your look? like I said, it's all about your emotions. What are you carrying there? What is it that you want to achieve? It's like you're looking at your emotional stability. And it's like... Mm, hold on. Venus, yeah. What are you investing in? What is your heart? Like, who are you investing in? It's like you're guarding your heart too. Like, it's a beautiful, precious pearl. And it's like you're becoming very much aware of what you give and what you receive. But you're also focusing on your own inner value, which is also the, the second house. It's also the house that is ruled by Venus because it is ruled by Taurus. 
I see that you're also finding the value within yourself, the beauty within yourself, within your heart, within your emotions, but also within other people as well. And this is also about money. Venus does rule how you make your money as well. So I do see here there is a great focus in this timeline around your finances, okay? Doing the things that you love, connecting with the people that you love, and letting go of anything, exercising anything that does not belong there or does not resonate with your heart. Because we have heart here, heart here. Um, and the second house, too, is also about your emotions, what you hold on to. Yes, Queen of Swords. Yes, you're in this energy of, and this is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is Libra and Taurus. Libra and Taurus as well. So I do see here that you have strong boundaries now. This is who you are in this timeline. You're you're this bad B energy, right? Regardless of gender. You're like, I've gone through the clouds. I've gone through the confusion. I know where I stand. I know what I give and I'm not accepting anything less than that. So I see you speaking your truth. I see you setting boundaries. I see you being very much like... um sitting in your power here eight of wands manifestation yeah you're manifesting a lot of things that you want to own that you want to possess but you know that you cannot manifest it if you don't have self-love as well for some of you you're manifesting love too but again it has to be someone that is in alignment with you with this queen of swords being here you're manifesting at a rapid pace because you're getting rid of so much stuff that is not in alignment with you, that is not, mm, it's not making you happy, it's not fulfilling you, it's not at the same level, so to speak, than you are. And because you're getting rid of that and you're freeing yourself from all these destructive impulses, thoughts, ideas, ideologies, and you're aligning with the energy of love, you're manifesting so much and it's coming to you real quick. For some of you, I see as well a lot of inspiration, a lot of passion with this Eight of Wands. For others of you, I see as well here a lot of travel too in this timeline, okay? We have given to passion. Yes, that's that Mercury and Sag right there. Yeah, I feel like you're, you're just aligning with your passion, with your excitement, there's so much transformation here. You're going with the flow. You're stepping into your own independence, into your power, into your sacral chakra as well here, which is where we store our emotions, right? There's this, um, there's a lot of accountability around what emotions, what experiences have you been holding on to and which ones do we need to get rid of? For some of you, if you are into music and you are into the performing arts, I see you being more focused in regards to that, okay, and manifesting something big when it comes to your creative endeavors, your creative projects. Breaking free, which is so interesting because you have freeing yourself. Yeah, this is who you are. You're a free, a free bird. Now I'm hearing that song. What is it called? Nelly Furtado, Fly Like a Bird. Is that the song? think that's the sign and number 11 yeah you're walking through new portals you're letting go of anything that was not allowing you to fly free and let me tell you anyone who will break away any chains that are holding her down is the queen of swords she has that sword and she's not afraid to use it she's not prioritize because your priorities are are different now you are prioritizing yourself. You are pri prioritizing your heart. You are prioritizing your energy. You are prioritizing your manifestations, your well-being. You're so focused and organized now with the things that you want, the things that are in alignment with your heart that there is no other way but for spirit to give you what you want. Because the Queen of Swords is saying, this is what it is. This is what I got rid of. Now what's coming in its place? I like that energy. Ancestors. You're honoring your ancestors. A lot of healing. We got the snake energy there. Again, Isolation energy here. Um, again, it's this energy of, for a lot of you, with the hands being here. Yes, this is talking about ancestors. For a lot of you, you are breaking patterns when it comes to your ancestral 
your ancestral line okay generational patterns but for others of you i also see here with the snake entangled in all these hands i'm also picking up this energy of like you're not allowing yourself to be entangled by other people and that's that queen of swords she's like no i got other things to do she's not afraid to say no and so i feel like for some of you you're you're even going to say no to certain certain family members or hands that are wanting your attention or that are like pulling your energy we also got Rohini energy here with the Cobra. Again, with the sacral, with the root chakra, with the solar plexus. Another sea serpent. So you might resonate a lot with uh, serpent energy, Cobra, snakes. Again, this is all about emotion. Um, even though it is a spirit card in this deck, it is about your, your emotional well-being. And I see here that you're wrapping up a cycle when it comes to maybe you used to give a lot to yourself when it comes to other people. Like you will allow yourself to be entangled in other people's drama or emotions. But I feel like, again, it's like you're owning your emotional well-being, which is really, really good because it gives you emotional intelligence. Pile number one. What else am I picking up here? Yeah, it's like you're healing all these emotional wounds. And you're you're not going to be afraid of expressing your desires. You're going to be expressing. Because snake energy for me, it's all about, yes, emotions, healing. But it's also about creativity. And it's also that Shakti energy, that sensuality, that desire energy, right? It's also temptation, of course. But... The snake energy does help us move and direct our energy into a healthy a healthy outlet. And for some of you, that's what you're prioritizing. It's like you're no longer just, you know, having your energy move all over the place. Like you're directing it to a certain place. And this is what is going to give you that manifestation that you've been wanting, those manifestations. That's why, because you're breaking free and you're like, okay, I need to take care of that, that, and that. And that's what's going to create like a pure uh, vessel for your energy, for your manifestations to come in, but also for your energy. Yeah, you're holding space before yourself. That's it. Point blank period. That's what you're doing. This is this is who you've this is the timeline that you switched into. It's yourself. And not from a place of ego, not from a place of it's just a place of self love. And because you're holding space for yourself, like I said, and you're prioritizing yourself and you're getting rid of these emotional wounds of these um ancestral generational patterns. And you're breaking free and you're prioritizing yourself. Your manifestations are coming in so fast like the Eight of Wands. Now the shadow work that you're going to be doing in this timeline is going to be about your throat chakra, your voice. And that makes sense with that Queen of Swords being there. But again, it's like you're not going to be afraid to speak your desires, to speak to the universe what exactly it is that you want. But not only the universe, but the people around you. You know, the Queen of Swords is one to tell you, hey, you know what? This is what I expect. This is what I want. And if you're not giving me, I have to cut it out, right? That's that Queen of Swords energy. It's also with the voice here is letting go of the fear and the shame. Especially around your manifestations. Especially around the things that you desire. Because we do tend to get caught up in that. When we desire something, when we want something, it's like we always have some type of shame or guilt. And it could be because, you know, our family may be growing up Put that idea in our head. And for many of you, this is what you're letting go of. It's like you're letting go of the self-judgment. Yeah, you're tapping into your intuition. You're doing things and that is being in that heart space. It's a perfect balance between your heart and your mind. Between your heart and your mind. <laughs> And your last message is prosperity sisters are happiness and joy. You're using your intuition to make the harsh decisions, the logical decisions. But that is the timeline that you stepped into, pile number one. I hope that it resonated. Let me know if you are already feeling this. If you're like, you know what? Yeah, I used to be, you know, shy about speaking up or 
um, you know, shy about asking the universe what it is that I want or from other people. Have you felt the shift yet? Let us know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Hello, pile number two. I hope you guys are doing great. So let's see what is this new timeline that you jumped into. Let's have a look here. Let me get the archetype card right here. Okay. So this is the archetype that you are stepping into, that you just stepped into, may I say. Ooh, a Don Juan. Okay. <laughs> Spotlights your positive seductive qualities. Shadow attribute, using the power of romantic attraction for private agendas. Okay. So regardless of gender, this is someone who uses their... Um, I, I want to say, you know what? I was going to say, yes, you might be using your seductive qualities. But also to me, this is giving me like magician devil energy and not in a bad way. The devil can and the devil has his positive qualities. If you take in my tarot course, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The devil is very good at um, getting what he wants. And so is the magician, right? They manipulate and bend energy. Now, the devil more of the will, the magician more of energy, but okay. Um, there is this like, and manipulation is used so bad now, like in such a bad way. But, you know, sometimes manipulating energy is not a bad thing. You know, it, it doesn't mean like you're doing bad things to other people. It just means you're using the energy to attract the things that you want, is using certain qualities to get the things that you want. And that doesn't always involve, um, you know, doing harm to others, okay? Just, just put it out there. But I'm also seeing this right now as like your rising sign. I don't know, for some of you, you're stepping into your rising sign, which if you guys know, and if you've taken my astrology, um, if you've bought an astrology reading from me, or if you guys have just listened to my my view on astrology, then you guys know that I think that the rising sign is the sign that we come to embody, is the sign that we we have come in to learn and master in this lifetime. That's why we chose, our soul chose a certain um, rising sign, okay? That's why many of us don't fit in or we feel like we don't resonate with the rising sign unless we have other signs in that sign, then yes. But for many of you, I feel like you've been wanting to particularly, maybe that was your intention when you quantum jumped, you were like, oh, I want to embody my rising sign. <laughs> so for example, um, I have to give personal examples because I feel like that's how you guys connect, right? So when I quantum jumped like uh, a couple of, I would say like a month ago, I was going to say weeks ago, but a couple, like I think a month ago, I said I wanted to embody my Aslaysha, um rising sign. Like that's what I really wanted to embody and come into like into alignment with. And so for some of you, maybe that's what you said. You wanted to embody maybe not, maybe not your rising, but I am picking up rising here. <clears throat> but for others of you, you might be, uh, maybe you're like, I wanted to embody more of your, you know, your moon sign or your Jupiter sign or like a certain sign. There's something about or a certain aspect about, but astrology is attached to it in some way. I don't know. That's for someone specific where it's like, I want to embody my, let's say, certain nakshatra or a certain rising or a certain a placement in my chart or a certain aspect of self right probably you always hear like oh you know you're you're very good at like sales or you're very good at you know guiding others and maybe that's what you wanted to do you're like okay so let me embody that let me let me step into a timeline where i am more more of this type of thing okay that's kind of what the energy that i'm picking up hopefully i'm making sense you guys but i see here that in this timeline you are the spotlight is on you the spotlight is on you okay and and i see you attracting so much and it's through some type of quality that you have Okay, for some of you, it's also, it's like a lot of lovers. Maybe you've been wanting to attract a lot of lovers or just a lot of connections or a lot of people. But Adon Juan, again, yes, it is someone who, you know, 
traditionally as someone who has a lot of relationships or you know is very seductive with a lot of people or is very well known within a lot of people but I'm not gonna look at it like that and for some of you maybe that's what you wanted for others of you it's more of like I feel like you want to connect more maybe with community or with other people around you but it's this energy of sed seduction okay we have the 12th house here this is the house of intuition the unconscious I'm going to put the card here because I know when I put it down here you won't be able to read it but it is the house of intuition, the unconscious. It is the house of Pisces. Here is where we can see transcendent experiences, hospitals, prisons, secret agendas, and hidden enemies, as well as unknown possibilities and one's own weakness. This house is also associated with long-term confinement, seclusion, and psychic ability. So for some of you, again, there's this energy of using... Um, the jump to step into this for some of you it is to a more psychic version of you or there's like an aspect of self i don't know why because usually we get quantum jumping like oh you know um i want to step into a more abundant side of myself but sometimes people use it to to be like oh you know i want to step into a timeline where i really hone my psychic abilities or my charm or my charisma or there's something here about personality for you guys okay something about a different side of you for some of you maybe yes maybe you know you want to work in maybe i don't know in a hospital or something like this For some of you, might you might not even be aware that you quantum jumped. This could have happened in your dreams too, just because I'm in the 12th house. Maybe you did this at a subconscious level. But whatever, okay, whatever time when you jumped into is a long-term thing. Okay, got it. Got it, got it, got it. For some of you, you... That's why I keep getting astrology for you guys. I don't know if you have certain things in your 12th house. And you know when they say that planets that are in the 12th house, they're planets that are in prison, basically. That, that's kind of like the, the, the thing that... Sorry, that's my, my water machine. Um, but there's this like... Hold on. This happens when I channel a lot. Okay, hold on. There's this like this... Um, Okay, you have planets in your 12th house. They are in prison or you feel like you can't tap into them. That's that 12th house. You have to tap into them because they're there at a subconscious level. And for some of you, maybe you're like, well, you know what? I have my Jupiter there. And so I want to tap more into it. There's something about your 12th house. There's something about and You don't have planets there. It could be the, the ruling planet. So let's say, for example, your 12th house is ruled by cancer. You know, that kind of thing but there's something here at a subconscious level too that you feel like you couldn't tap into like it was secluded or it was in in prison so to speak type of thing you know and you're like i want to unleash it i want to i want to tap into it i want to set it free in a way yeah you might have saturn in your 12th house and look at that saturn is all about restrictions there's something here that you've restricted yourself from yeah, there was some type of limitation here. You might have strong Aquarius, Capricorn energy. There was something that you were like, oh, it's delayed or something. And look, this looks like a little portal. Yeah, there's something here that I feel like you couldn't tap into because of responsibilities or something. And for others of you, again, you wanted to step into a timeline where you had more responsibility, more power. Where you were this position of power or authority because saturn is a it's a very well respected and feared planet you know for its um for its good reasons for some of you you're like i want to become this saturn saturnian person you know someone who has boundaries someone who has limitations someone who is not afraid to delay things someone who's not afraid to take on the responsibility a different position of power is what i'm getting here south node for some of you you want to release something you're releasing the restrictions because this is following this is followed by saturn yeah there's something here wherever okay you quantum jump to a place where you're owning something that was at your subconscious level 
and subconsciously there was restrictions and there was limitations but you're like no i want to release them so now you're here Ooh, pile number one got queen of swords and you guys got king of swords you probably are coming from <laughs> but you're more in your masculine energy which makes sense with the don juan there Okay, hold on, hold on. Nine of Swords, look at that. Yes, you, the timeline that, you're step, that you stepped into is this timeline of you embodying this King of Swords. Your truth, your mental clarity. Because I feel like there was a lot of fears before. You might already be seeing these changes of like, you know what, I feel really good. Like that used to scare me. Like maybe you're aware, like that used to scare me. Why doesn't it scare me no more? You know, type of thing. Like, before there was restless nights or there was a lot of fear around owning an aspect of you or becoming or embodying this aspect of you but with this king of swords now in this timeline you're like no i'm releasing that i'm letting that go and it has to do with your psychic abilities yeah for sure like i said the 12th house i was getting that there's something here that you're owning because you're now seeing things from a spiritual perspective. This is giving me like this. Okay, this is giving me moon and Aquarius. Like in a water house type of energy. Like you have now this emotional intelligence, but also this very beautiful mind that you're using with your psychic abilities to now not get caught up in this nine of swords energy. You're becoming this very wise individual here in this timeline. And you're very, it's like you're, yeah, you're owning your psychic abilities and you're becoming a professional at it because the king of swords is someone who has studied, is someone who's a professional, is someone who, this is my doctor card, this is someone who went to school, right? Or it doesn't mean you have to go to school. But um, this is someone who definitely has mastered something, who has a lot of knowledge about something. The sun and the stars. Yeah, there's something about astrology here. There's something about astrology. And in this timeline, you embody both the masculine and the feminine, but you're more in your masculine energy here, but yet you're not forgetting your feminine. It's like your feminine energy is is giving this energy to the masculine energy within you look at you and she's she has a wand too because she's manifesting from a place of intuition she's manifesting from a place of the moon of emotional intelligence in order for her to shine bright again the spotlight's on you self-love a new cycle with the number 10 You're stepping into self-love. You're doing things out of a place of self-love. Gifts from God. Yeah, you, okay, for many of you, you quantum jump to owning the gifts from you, from God, from spirit. You're like, I want to own my gifts. I want to own my intuitive abilities. But for some of you, it could be a gift. For example, you know, you're like, I have a gift for art. I really want to showcase that. And so, again, is there's like an aspect of you here that you jump, you quantum jump to childhood innocence maybe it is something that happened in childhood maybe it is again in the sun beaming for some of you it's like i want this the spotlight on me or i want to shine this gift this quality about me there's something about the sun being here and the sun is shining and it will shine because that's that's the timeline that you're in Ooh, the unicorn. Another spirit card. That is very interesting because Pile One also got a spirit card. And the unicorn is all about, you know, believing, right? Because not everyone believes in unicorns. But again, it's this energy of you owning the unicorn within you. You owning what makes you different, what makes you unique. Because also the unicorn in this particular deck is all about reconnecting to your higher wisdom and your own divinity. So for some of you in this timeline that you jumped into, 1414, as I said that, you are reconnecting with first your higher self, with your spiritual team, but also within the divinity 
that makes you you and for many of you it has to do with your rising sign it has to do with your 12th house it has to do with some type of gift and there was some type of limitation but in this timeline you're letting it go you're letting it go and you're you're allowing this gift that was restricted before to shine yeah it's like you're you're questioning more you're exploring more you are contemplating the unexplainable now yeah you're more connected to your mind's eye you're trusting your instincts pile one also got this very interesting you're trusting your instincts now you're trusting your intuition now wow look at that wisdom look at that owl behind her look at that puma kind of like between her hair but yet you're still remaining gentle with the little deer here the shadow that you're going to be doing in this timeline that you jumped into is going to be about boundaries get the f away from me <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, with this King of Swords, you, you're going to have no issue with that. You're going to master that because there might be a lot of a lot of um, energies around you that might want to restrict you that you're going to have to let go of. And that's something that you are going to be working through. Okay, there might be certain things in childhood where maybe you were taught that you needed to take care of other people. But I see this becoming a little bit... Um, less than like for example you're not going to be you know nurturing a lot of other people it's like you're more focused in your own personal power your wisdom and also in your new cycle of life as well but boundaries is going to be one of those things that you will be definitely doing shadow work in this timeline and we have potential yeah for some of you this is where you, this is where you jump to it's like show me my potential show me what um, you know what I came here to do there's something about like s put the spotlight on my potential show me what, I, what I'm capable of show me what my gift is well this is your timeline and you're about to reach your highest potential and that's why learning to set boundaries is going to be your shadow work because if you want to reach your highest potential you have to set boundaries you have to set boundaries and when you have also spiritual gifts you have to have boundaries in place Because people get attracted to your light. And that can become troublesome sometimes if you don't have the proper boundaries. So that's something that you are going to be doing shadow work on. Because you do have this beautiful light that it's ready to shine. And your potential is waiting. And that's what you're doing in this particular jump that you made. And your last card here. Wow, success in transformation. Yeah, you are transforming and you're you're tapping you're tapping into your success you're tapping into your potential that is where you jump to but that is what i have and you cannot get the success without the transformation with the number 13 here so take care of yourself stay safe and i will catch you guys in the next video bye hello pile number three let's see what is your what where did you jump to what timeline did you jump into let's have a look but before let's pull out the archetype card let's see what archetype are you embodying oh a monk and a nun selfless devotion and single-minded dedication to spirit so for some of you you manifested well not manifested you jumped into a timeline where you're being very selfless okay where you're you're dedicating yourself to something that you specifically said okay and it could be to spirit it could definitely be but it could also be to family it could also be to a relationship it could also be to friends it could be to a community it could be to a cause it could be to many different things you fill in the blank a uh, shadow attributes is negative judgment of the physical world excess pity hmm okay let's see let's see what else do we have here we have Aries energy, leadership energy here. 
vertex, karmic point, sinistry, faded connections, turning point. For some of you, this in this timeline, you are wanting to change something. There's a change here that you wanted in some and I know all time like quantum jumps are always about change, but there's something about like I wanted to change this dynamic or I want to switch, for example, let's say um I don't know what would be a great example like let's say you're in a toxic connection and you're like I want to quantum jump to a timeline where I'm not in this toxic connection anymore or I'm not in this situation dynamic uh position job or like anymore I want I want something different okay there's something here or maybe getting out of a karmic connection or of a karmic loop there's something about a karmic loop that you're like I want to quantum jump out of that Okay, there's something there about it. Like, I want my independence again. I want to be a leader again with this Aries energy. I want a new beginning. You're in this Mars energy. That's that's the archetype of the energy that you're in, this boss energy, which is very interesting because we have the monk, the monk which also, um, they stand for something, but it's more of a peaceful protest, if you will. Not even a protest, but like a, a peaceful cause, right? they stand for they dedicate themselves to spirit and they're not doing it in a harsh or like um, a protest type of way they're doing it very silently they're doing it you know a silent cause here and so for some of you there might be something here that you are also like standing up for but it's not like a Like you're not creating problems is what I'm getting here. We have this yang energy. Okay, for others of you, it's the opposite way around. For others of you, you were this like peaceful, single-minded. You had this single-minded dedication to something. And it's like, I want to quantum jump out of that. And in order for us to do that, spirit is like, well, we need to tap into this Aries, this masculine with the Mars energy, this Yang energy, in order for us to be proactive about it, in order for us to be able to express ourselves, in order for us to take action, to do things, to be daring, in order for us to move forward. For some of you, again, it's like you, you quantum jump to get out of something here, maybe to leave a masculine or if you're a masculine to leave something that was karmic you might be an aries gemini leo libra sag or aquarius those are my masculine signs the three of pentacles for some of you, you quantum jump as well to this place where you're able to build build on a skill to take action on a skill to create something solid again it's like you were in a loop and you're like, I want to get out of this loop. That's what keeps coming up. Yeah, in order to get out of something. For some of you, you quantum jump to get out of something. That, that's what keeps coming up here. Something that maybe you've built with, okay, or that you created with. There's some type of history here. It's like, I built this, I created this. Or maybe you wanted to quantum jump to get out of a community or a group of something. Because I feel like you were no longer passionate about this, right? Because the Eight of Cups does talk. You used, you might have done this during the eclipse, actually, the solar eclipse. Just because of the red that I'm seeing on the on the person here walking away from the Eight Cups. Yeah, you could have used this during the, the solar eclipse. You're like, I want to quantum jump out of this. I don't want to be in this karmic point. I don't want to be in this loop. I don't want to be in this situation. I want something different. Yeah, because there's something faded here, but for others of you, again, you're like, I want to move out of this karmic point to step into my faded life. For others of you, you're like, yeah, this was faded for me, but I want to quantum jump out of it because I don't like it. Whatever this is, you did put a lot of time and energy into it. You really cared about it at some point. Yeah, and it's like, I want to use my willpower. My willpower to to walk away from things, my willpower to create something better for myself yeah yeah to plant new seeds to move in a different direction it's like i i moved to a different like i would say 
it's this energy of like, yeah, I created all of this, but I want to experience something else. So you, you wanted to plant new seeds. The truth of others. Wow. Yeah, it's like, okay, it's like you were walk. It's like you were in this timeline before where you were, I don't know, listening to other people, doing things for other people. Again, there was a selfless devotion to something. And I feel like now it's like, I want to devote in this new timeline to myself, to my own seeds, to the things I want to plant. I want to be a leader. I want to use my willpower to create the things that I want. I want to embody this yang energy. Wow, peace. It's so interesting because you have this dynamic of the yang energy, right? Who's always going, but it's like you're doing it from a very peaceful place. And it could also be because you're like, I want to find my own peace. I want to find my own peace. I want to do my own thing. I want to plant my seeds. I want to create things of value to me, things that matter to me, things that I'm passionate about, things that will bring me peace. Yeah, it's like, because Mars is war, right? Mars is the soldier. Mars is the one to action. It's It can be a little, Mars can be a little bit of a hothead. So it's like, you're like, I want to get out of this difficulty, this struggle, this like war energy that's going on. And I want to use this this masculine energy from a place of peace and love and like self selfless devotion as well, right? For a cause or for... Whatever that cause is for you. Promise. For some of you, okay. for some of you, you, you quantum jump to meet with someone or to be with someone. To a timeline where the sun shines for the both of you. That just got romantic real quick. For some of you, you probably did this during a new moon. For some of you, there is a promise here. You quantum jump to a promise that probably before you couldn't keep, but you want to keep it. So you're like, I want to quantum jump. I want to switch a timeline in some way. For some of you, maybe you wanted to get like, be more at peace with someone else. With someone that you love. There's something about people here. Because we have karmic connections, faded connections. We have the elephant being your guide here in this timeline. And the elephant here is all about, is the fire element. And he is unstoppable, right? He is auspicious. He is wise. For some of you, you probably worked with Lord Ganesh to help you jump um, to this timeline. But it's like in this timeline, there's there's like a lot of good luck. There's a lot of like, I can keep my promise, right? I can use my willpower. I can use my wisdom, you also jumped into a timeline where there's a lot of good fortune for you. Where you're able to overcome any obstacles that come your way. That is what the elephant represents for me. It's like this energy of not feeling stuck. For some of you, you also quantum jump to a timeline where you're very generous. You're very loving. For some of you, maybe you're like, I don't want to be, I want to dedicate my life to something else. Again, there's a selflessness to this um, timeline that you stepped into. Yeah, you're like, I want to bask in the joy and the light. I want to bask in the sun. I want peace. I want to, you know, um, have a more successful successful life like i want to reap what i have sown type of thing and then we have here as your shadow integration you're integrating the selfless and the selfish energy and i feel like that's kind of where you're going to that's the shadow work that's going to be coming in and we're seeing this right because i was saying we have the selfless energy but then we have the mars energy we have the peace energy but then we have that 
um, you know, that yang energy again. So it's this, you're going to be going back and forth between these polarities in this timeline, finding the balance in between these two energies. And you're going to learn how to integrate it. Where do I have to be this yang energy? Where do I have to assert myself through my willpower? But also where do I have to be selfless? You know, is it with family? Is it when, when I keep a promise? It's like taming the ego a little bit. When do I use my ego to move forward in life, to accomplish the things that I want? But where do I also tell my ego to take a back seat? And usually this is when we're talking about relationships, when we're talking about other people, the truth of others, respecting other people's point of view as well, right? It's a very beautiful timeline to be in because it's like you're looking at the duality of things and you're embracing the duality of others but that's not the point so much is more about accepting and integrating that duality within you and that is the shadow that you're going to be doing in this particular timeline and again there's beautiful energy here there is a lot of promises accomplishing a lot of things it's about basking in the sun it's about you know doing things getting things done it's about making things happen for yourself but also again knowing when to be a gentle giant too right very beautiful beautiful energy yeah in order for you to reach wholeness so maybe for some of you're like i just want to feel whole whole within myself in order for us to do that we need to integrate different aspects of self the feminine and the masculine the light and the shadow and that's what you're going to be doing but you are going to experience a lot of wholeness within you and your life and ultimately bring you a sense of peace very very beautiful energy pile number three you guys are always my most my most complex piles and i love it and your final card here is raw intention yeah look at that number 22 you might be seeing 222 a lot since you quantum jumped but um you might be 22 you might be 27 your birthdays might land in those days of the month but again it's like you're looking at the raw energy the raw experience of being human is what I want to say. <laughs> and you're integrating this and therefore becoming whole. Knowing that there is no light without the dark. Right? There is no feminine without the masculine and vice versa. Very beautiful energy. Very, very beautiful. Um, but that is what I have for you, pile number three. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Bye.